This patient has been diagnosed with kidney failure, but he doesn't know much about the ailment or what to expect. This video will help people like him to learn and understand more about his illness. There are several reasons why a person may suffer from kidney failure. Diabetes and hypertension are among the leading causes. Besides kidney failure, diabetes and hypertension can also lead to heart disease, blindness and stroke. Every year, the number of patients with severe kidney failure in Malaysia increases at a rate of around 10% to 15% and some 51% of them have diabetes. The kidneys have some very important functions. They help to remove waste products that are generated by the body's metabolism. They also help regulate water and chemical imbalance and produce important hormones to regulate blood pressure, hemoglobin level and maintain healthy bones. Besides diabetes and hypertension, other causes of end-stage kidney failure include inflammation of the kidneys, glomerulonephritis, stones, hereditary illness such as polycystic kidneys, abuse of painkillers and infections. When the kidneys fail, the patient becomes sick due to the accumulation of toxins in the body. The patient also experiences excessive water retention and will usually feel tired, have poor appetite, swelling of the legs and develop shortness of breath. If the symptoms become worse, they can lead to fits and unconsciousness. If you have these symptoms, your doctor will do a series of tests to confirm end-stage kidney failure. This will include blood, ultrasound and urine tests. Once the diagnosis is confirmed, you would need to start treatment to clean your blood. This is called dialysis. I used to suffer from backache and sought traditional treatment including massage to relieve the pain. I also suffered from fever and lack of appetite. I finally consulted a doctor when traditional treatment did not improve my condition. After doing some tests, my doctor said my kidneys had failed. I was not too worried because I believed chronic kidney failure could be cured with some medication. But I was speechless when he told me there was no cure. I thought my doctor's diagnosis was wrong and I didn't want to accept it. Maybe something else was wrong with me. So I sought a second opinion from a different doctor and when the results of my second medical tests confirmed my first doctor's diagnosis, I felt my life had come to an end. But my doctor gave me hope. He counseled me and explained the dialysis process. There are three types of treatment for kidney failure, hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis and a kidney transplant. In hemodialysis, the blood is removed from the patient and circulated through a filter called a dialyzer, which is attached to a dialysis machine. Waste products and excess water are filtered out through the dialyzer and clean blood is then returned to the body. Each hemodialysis session takes about four hours. A patient has to undergo three sessions a week or about 13 sessions a month and has to travel to the dialysis center regularly. Hemodialysis is generally a painless procedure. Apart from pricking of the needles, the pain is somewhat bearable. During hemodialysis, patients are able to read the newspaper or a book and work on their laptops too. Patients should try not to sleep or to eat too much during dialysis. Before you start dialysis, there are certain surgical procedures you need to undergo. Firstly, your doctor will discuss the type of dialysis that is most suitable for you. If you choose hemodialysis, a minor surgery will be performed to create a fistula on the arm. This fistula is created by joining an artery with a vein so that there is a bigger channel for a needle to enter the body to allow the dialysis process to take place. Ideally, the fistula should be created one to two months before dialysis begins. However, in emergency cases where dialysis needs to be performed immediately, your doctor will insert a catheter into one of the large veins in the neck to enable hemodialysis to be carried out. Another type of dialysis is peritoneal dialysis. In peritoneal dialysis, 
The human abdomen, which is lined by a layer of cells called the peritoneum, is used to perform dialysis. A soft plastic tube is inserted into the abdomen about one to two weeks before starting dialysis. This tube allows about two liters of fluid to enter the body. The fluid, which is left for four to six hours, acts to extract the toxins and excess water from the patient's body. It is then drained and a fresh two liters is introduced into the abdomen. Peritoneal dialysis can be carried out at home and there is no need to visit a dialysis center. Besides this, the patient does not need surgery for an AV fistula. This patient chose peritoneal dialysis because he lives far from the dialysis center. However, he has to exchange the fluid four times a day at home, it can be inconvenient at times. Peritoneal dialysis is completely painless. Although there is a tube in the patient's abdomen, it does not interfere with his daily life and he can carry out dialysis at home or even during his working hours. All he needs is a clean room with a table and a tap nearby to wash his hands. Your doctor will consider your lifestyle and if you have any other related medical problems as he helps you to decide if hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis is most suitable for you. Although dialysis plays a vital role in saving a patient's life, it is not enough on its own. Patients must supplement dialysis with medication prescribed by their doctor and follow a strict diet. Medication will include vitamins and tablets to strengthen their bones and also for high blood pressure and diabetes. Most patients will also need regular injections to help maintain the red blood cells in their blood. A proper diet plays an important role in the treatment of dialysis patients. Your dietitian will help you plan a diet that will help you feel better. Dialysis patients need to take care of what they eat and how much they drink because most patients with kidney failure will not produce much urine. All the water a patient drinks will accumulate in his body in between dialysis. Hence, patients have to be careful not to drink too much water. And because dialysis is only done three times a week, as compared to normal kidneys that work 24 hours a day, diet restriction is necessary. Your dietitian will advise on the types of food you can eat. Another way to treat end-stage renal failure is to have a kidney transplant. Kidney transplants have been performed in Malaysia since 1975. Organs used in transplants come from a deceased person. However, immediate members of the family make the best living organ donors. These living donors will have to undergo various tests to ascertain if they are suitable for transplant surgery. Kidneys may come from suitable deceased donors or from live donors who are usually close relatives. A kidney transplant offers a patient the best quality of life when compared to hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. After the transplant, the patient will have to take anti-rejection tablets to prevent his body from rejecting the new kidney. However, because of the shortage of kidney donors, the majority of patients will need to depend on long-term dialysis. In Malaysia, there are three main sectors that provide dialysis treatment. Government hospitals, private dialysis centers, and non-profit dialysis centers. A full list of dialysis centers is available at the National Renal Registry website at nrr at msn.org.my. You may also ask your welfare officer for assistance to locate a dialysis center nearest to you. Dialysis treatment is available in most government hospitals at a minimum cost. However, due to the large number of patients, the waiting period in certain hospitals is long and patients are unable to get a permanent place for dialysis treatment. Treatment in private dialysis centers is available in most major towns, but the cost varies from center to center and may range between 150 ringgit to 250 ringgit per treatment. At non-profit dialysis centers, patients are aided by a 50 ringgit government subsidy. 
Hence, patients only pay 60 ringgit or less for dialysis treatment according to the rate charged by these centers. This government subsidy is paid directly to non-profit dialysis centers for eligible patients. Various organizations or agencies also make payment for a patient's dialysis treatment. These organizations or agencies include SOXO, Social Security Organization or PERKESO, JPA, Jabatan Perhikmatan Awam, Public Services Department, statutory bodies, Baitul Mal or Majlis Agama Islam, state religious departments, employers according to the terms of employment, and insurance companies. You should contact the welfare officer at your hospital or the human resource manager at your place of employment to find out your eligibility. It is important that kidney failure patients learn about their ailment and its treatment. Be fully aware of the treatment you are receiving and if you are unsure of anything, just ask your doctor. This will allow you to fully understand the course of treatment and follow your doctor's prescription. It is a good idea to maintain a report card on your progress to know how well you are doing on dialysis. Emotional support from family members is also important because patients undergoing dialysis can be under stress when they are not well. Furthermore, good family and social support is very important to help patients improve their overall health. Once you feel better on dialysis, there are a few physical exercises that you can do. Physical exercises have been proven to benefit patients in many ways. For instance, you will become more energetic and have a better appetite. Regular physical exercise can also help to control some medical problems like high blood pressure and diabetes. Many patients on long-term dialysis are able to return to work and become self-sufficient, improve their self-confidence and self-esteem and enjoy a better quality of life. You may want to discuss your health issues with your employer as this will help both parties come to a favorable decision regarding the type of job that is suitable for you. You can also join the patient support group initiated by the National Kidney Foundation of Malaysia. Membership is free and open to all kidney patients, regardless of whether you are being treated in government hospitals, private clinics or at an NKF affiliated dialysis center. Being a member of the patient support group offers many benefits. To join the patient support group, contact the Welfare Unit, National Kidney Foundation of Malaysia, number 70, Jalan 14 Oblique 29, 46100 Petaling Jaya, Selangor Darul Esan, Malaysia. Telephone number 03-7954-9048 or your nearest NKF affiliated dialysis center. Having end-stage kidney failure does not mean you cannot enjoy life. If you can adapt to some of the changes and have a positive outlook, life can continue to be meaningful. The National Kidney Foundation of Malaysia Giving Hope